all in all, uh, every three leukemias or M6 leukemias by the old FAB classification are, are a small subset of, of acute leukemias, close to 15%. Um, and we, we, there's previous data reporting very, adver very adverse prognosis of all these patients uh, of acute erythroid leukemia by itself. Now, there's a small subset of acute erythroid leukemias, which we call pure erythroid leukemia. And the distinction basically is in all erythroid leukemias, which we classically call, uh, called M6A, there is a subset of at least 30% of myeloblasts. Now, pure erythroid leukemia is purely erythroid in lineage. So there are no, no myeloblasts. It's all a bone, a bone marrow substitution by abnormal, very uh, undifferentiated, immature erythroblast with no myeloid features. Now, this is a very, very uh, infrequent subset of uh, leukemias. In fact, we, we observed that only 13% of all acute erythroid leukemias, which in all are in common, uh, were pure erythroid leukemias. Now, the question was, can we better define how this disease uh, is biologically? Because we know that even though there's not many cases, they have dismal prognosis. And our objective was to try to dissect and delineate the biology of this disease and behavior with different types of therapy compared to patients with acute erythroid leukemia. And what we did found is that compared to acute erythroid leukemia, where the prevalence of, for example, very complex uh, karyotype is 40%, 96% of patients had a complex karyotype and from the this is 22 patients that uh, that we sorry 26 patients that we evaluated which is the highest uh, the longest series that there is to date um, in 12 of these patients we had sequencing data and uh, 11 of the 12 patients had a p53 mutation uh, which we, could either be a unique mutation or in 50% of the patients double mu double mutation so our impression is that most likely not only the presence of a very complex karyotype, but, but p53 mutations may be in the basis of the biology of this disease, and that probably translates into its adverse dismal prognosis. And we then wanted to evaluate whether there were significant differences if treated with chemotherapy compared to hypomethylating agents, knowing that these also were patients which were older. And both in other erythroid leukemias and pure leukemias, the use of chemotherapy did not really increase their survival or, or significantly uh, change the event free survival. So we feel like probably these patients and in line with more recent publications where we see that P53 mutants respond equally to hypomethylating agents, probably we feel like this subset of patients would benefit with uh, azacitidine or dicitabine versus intensive chemotherapy.